Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Freaks with a Z, the podcast all about movies. We will introduce the next movie in a little bit. But first, I want to invite you, yes you, the listener and or watcher, to submit your fan recommendation to the podcast for the fan vote, which is usually during Tay's episode. But this week, since episode 50 is coming up, we're going to do something a little bit different. But we still want your movie recommendations. That's right. You can either send us an email at ff.filmfreaks with a Z at the end at gmail.com or comment on the latest episode of Film Freaks with a Z and or uh, talk in my movie stuff Discord section on the Ferret Nation Discord to give us a movie recommendation. All right. Let's go ahead and introduce ourselves before we introduce the movie. I am Yemi the Ferret. Who am I here with? Radio Waffle. Hey, Mation. And Kalas. Oh, his name changed. Oh, Oh, yeah. Hello, Kalas. All right, we're in a new season now. We got Kalas instead of uh, Kalas here. (laughs) Season two was the shortest (laughs) season ever. Ah, but it was the best. (laughs) <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> enemy uh, at the gate. That's it. <laughs> yeah, enemy at the gate. That and uh, t- t- uh, tremors. There we go. And oh, yeah. Don't forget about tremors. Come on. Tremors was the best one. Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. Um, <laughs> how are you guys doing today? Uh, good. lazy well, the day. <laughs> Pretty good, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. How are you? Oh, How are you doing? I, you know, I'm doing okay. I got some tears in my eyes from the Browns losing today, but I'll get over it. I think my t- the 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 city team for me uh, has their first game tomorrow. Ah, the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. We will see how Good that luck. goes for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's not like I'm going to be watching or anything. I don't Uh-oh. care. Oh. You should you should watch and give us a report uh, as a non football fan. I think that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> uh, that'd be, that would just can I watch like the last ten minutes? That's all. That's the exciting you know what, I'll, part. You can watch the highlights on YouTube after the game is done. There you go. <laughs> I wow. still will not understand anything that's going on. Well, in the same vein of things, why don't you go ahead and introduce your movie? Oh sure. So our my movie uh, was the Peanut Butter Falcon from 2019, directed by. Excuse me, Tyler Nielsen and Michael Schwartz. Uh, it's about a down-on-his-luck crab fisherman who embarks on a journey to get a young man with Down syndrome to a professional wrestling school in rural North Carolina and away from the retirement home where he's lived for the past two and a half years. Uh, it stars Shia LaBeouf, Zach Gottesgen, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, Dakota Johnson... And a bunch of other people who are just like minor roles in it. So, yeah, it, it, you know, minor they're, roles, important. Minor. they're important, but I'm not going to say their names. <laughs> I don't know. Are they that important? I found the side no, characters they're... to be the worst <laughs> actors in the entire movie. <laughs> yep, that's fair. Uh, I'm going to start uh, start us off then um, with what did you guys think of uh, Zach? It's just like, uh, you know, an actual person with Down syndrome stuff. You know, how do you guys feel he did in this movie? I personally thought he did great. And uh, actually, um, confession before we get started, let me just say that I did not rewatch this movie. But oh. I did watch <gasps> it. It was like a year ago. So it was like fairly recent since I've seen it. And I did watch a couple clips on YouTube to remind me of, you know, certain things. But. Uh, you know, I feel like I didn't really need to watch it again, and it's not a movie I really wanted to rewatch, anyways. But yeah, Zach... Cal- Calus, you're cheating! <laughs> Spoiler alert! You can't do that. <laughs> Spoiler! Wow! You gotta, <laughs> you gotta watch. rewatch the movie. You can't, you can't just say, "Oh, I watched it a year ago." But I mean, still fresh. This in is my this mind. the biggest controversy since Greedy Waffles, <laughs> Waffles watched the wrong movie. <laughs> Thank God that's in the past. Yeah. <laughs> That was that was season one. No one cares about season one. <laughs> yeah. We still it's do care about the one point five. Shame, uh, shame, yeah, Callus, uh, yeah. shame, shame. Can we get a hashtag shame, Callus? 
Yes. <laughs> I think let's get that trending on on Twitter right now. Right. Yes. Number one trend. There was more anyway. than I would have rewatched it. <laughs> For future Anyways. reference, future reference, we gotta watch the movie again. <laughs> I mean, un- unless you watched it, like, in the past week or maybe month, if it's a memorable movie, a year is kind of is kind of pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm, much- I, hey, are, does that mean you're not going to rewatch the Transformers movies if someone if someone mm-hmm. picks one of those because you saw it in the past? Well, no. Can I, I do that, that actually? I would, I would like to say that I could do that. <laughs> well, this is the official the podcast rules. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> you gotta rewatch watch the movie unless yeah. you've watched it in the past week or so, okay, guys? A few weeks. Well, you got a few weeks leeway, you know, just in case you did watch it for whatever reason, you know, on your... Like, if someone recommended Final Destination this week, I wouldn't rewatch Final Destination because I literally just watched it a week ago, right? All right, was- well, I'll blame Yemi for not setting uh, rules in the first place. <laughs> he did. I just don't think we told you that. <laughs> All I'm okay. saying is, uh, I think that's Coco an unspoken rule. Wouldn't have done that, you know. I mean, just saying, cows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's an unspoken rule, just because it's like, you know, we're we're all trying to give our fresh takes on it. You know, we got to you know, you got sometimes a year can go by and your opinion on the movie can change drastically. I mean, we've, we've we, had that. Happen do before. we uh, just stop here, reconvene next week, let Callus watch it for real? Oh, Ka- Callus can take his L, and okay. uh, all his opinions are going to be moot. <laughs> right. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Anyways. Um, oh, yeah, let, let's yes. move on. Callus was saying thought... something when I interrupted him, so Callus, if you want to continue. Yeah, sure. So I was just going to say that um, Zach, as a person with Down syndrome, I thought um, he was actually a very good casting choice, and he brought a lot of um, heart to the movie, and... Uh, I really like that they. I actually kind of prefer this to like when an actor kind of pretends that he has Down syndrome because you know this way oh, it's sure. like a lot more genuine. So yeah. I actually really like this uh, casting choice. Yeah. So it's actually cool. Uh, I found out after the the directors met him like at some conference or something, and uh, he his dream was to become an actor. So they wrote this movie specifically for him. Oh wow! He's the only one that I honestly thought did a good job even Shia LaBeouf like I was just like didn't like him and <laughs> the girl that he ever wanted to bang or whatever that situation we'll get to, to that later uh yeah I thought he was really good and yeah, yeah. I thought cheers yeah. to him if he's listening cheers to you man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I guess like I saw he's actually done like two other movies since this so yeah he, he also it. he was at the Oscars too uh the year yeah. that this movie came out yeah, nice. He actually. Although, how long? How long ago did this movie come out? Did it was you? 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. So he's still alive, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. He he's actually the same age as me. Nice. Born in '85. I'll let I'll let the the listeners do the math there. <laughs> oh wow! I didn't think you were older than me. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> By one year. By one year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I thought. Now I'm I thought at the... least finally not the only old person here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, Go I, ahead. I thought Zach did a great job. He was the only character that I actually cared about during the movie. Even though, like Shia LaBeouf did a he did an okay job, you know. But I, mm-hmm. I mean, like I said before, everyone else in the movie just seemed to be kind of phoning it in. Like even Dakota Johnson, who plays Eleanor, just they didn't seem genuine. Like the biggest. Like the most startling one was right at the beginning. That big, the big guy who fires, um, what's his character's name? Tyler from the crabbing place or whatever. It, it sounded like they were like feeding his lines to him as he talked. It just, it's, it's, it felt very robotic, and he like paused at weird moments. And I'm like, who is this guy? And then later in the movie, in that scene where they're in the diner and and uh, Eleanor is on the phone with the retirement home, that lady who's giving her, like, some sort of life advice or whatever with the coffee, she's yeah. also, like, it's just, it sounded like someone was feeding her lines as the movie was being recorded, and it's like, it just it just kind of took me out of the movie because, uh, you know, it's, 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 everyone else is, you know, obviously memorized their lines. I mean, if yeah, I don't understand yeah. what's, what's with these other people. They just seem so yeah. robotic. It was, it was like, yeah, I know where he lives. 
Everybody in town knows him. Yeah. It's it's like what? <laughs> they probably tried to like hire um like local talent just to make the movie seem more genuine. Well, also like they had a very small budget, so probably most of these people, yeah, were local people, community actors, kind of thing. You know that they were just like, yeah, just come do this. Like we blew our budget on Shia LaBeouf and Dakota, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I agree that uh, uh, Dakota's acting was uh, like a bit dry at times, and uh, Shia, I didn't mind his acting so much. You know, he kind of does a good job as like a a backwoods. Uh, kind of trashy yeah. person. I didn't like Dakota's. I didn't mind it. It wasn't great. I, I don't think she's a like. She's been in the only other thing I know she's been in is you know Fifty Shades of Grey, which I've never seen. But like just from the stuff I've seen, I'm like it's a badly acted movie. I just don't think she's a great actress. <laughs> like she did yeah. okay for this. I thought Shia also did okay. Uh, he, like at the very beginning of the movie, I didn't care for him, but by the end, I was like, okay, he's he's grown on me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess the character of Tyler, especially. But, yeah, I, right. it, Tyler is a character. I felt like, like the acting was fine. I, I just felt like his, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I felt like his motivations kind of swapped swapped around a lot during like the first yeah. part of the movie because you know there's the scene you know he he walks away from Zach and leaves him at the diving pool or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden, you know, because there's a roadblock in the road, he turns around, goes back to Zach, and then they, you know, start walking cross country, uh, or not cross country, but you know, they start trying to travel down to Florida. It's just, it was just such a weird thing because like there was, right? But it's like his his character just kind of like, why why did he go back? Why why did he have to get Zach? Why there was no real reason. I mean, so, and that's the whole movie is there was a lot of unexplained and a lot of yeah. forced, like narratives. And, well, like, that's why I think like Tyler as a character, like the beginning was just kind of all over the place. By the end, it, like they like his character was like, OK, this is who he is. It was defined. It's like, OK, cool. And I feel like when he went back, like he went back because of the roadblock. He didn't want to get caught in it. And then I guess when they, you see the little kids start calling him the R word. That's, I think, when he finally goes, okay, this kid's a douche. I got to help him. But just, that's like the only, I guess, motivation is like, how dare they call him that? Which, yeah. again, how dare they call him that? But, and I guess, like, the, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. And the motivation for the movie, you know, it's a good story. You know, it's a good, you know, like, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like, a, I don't want to say a feel good, but like, uh, has a good, you know, perspective of, like, how that, you know, type of demographic is looked at, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, it had a good it message is, where it's like, we shouldn't message, treat yeah, okay, people with Down syndrome differently than, you know, a normal person. Because, I mean, because when, I mean, obviously when Dakota Fanning... Eleanor <laughs> started to um, kind of talk to Zach like he was still at the nursing home, like he was an old patient at the nursing home. That's when I think the movie had like its moment where it was like, yes, this is a great message here. Yeah. Even though it's kind of, you know, they, they're, you know, Zach's head is underwater at the time. He's trying to hold his breath for as yeah. long as he can. It still and is honestly, a good the whole message. Movie, that was my favorite scene. Yeah. That, that was a good scene. Definitely. Yeah, um, I think Tyler's. Um, his motivations as far as like side goes i think it just has to do with him kind of like being a good person on the inside but i guess most of his life he's kind of suppressed that because of the environment that he grew up in and, you know he's kind of like just learned to fend for himself and like not really care about others well so i guess I... I guess like the the guilt set in when he like walked away well, I think really was what turned around, like, seemed like in the flashback, you see, he was a good, you know, he was fine. And then when he accidentally killed whoever this Mark guy was, whether it was his dad was his or brother, brother um, he accidentally killed Mark. And from then, his life just kind of tanked and went, you know, downhill. So, and I think that one thing they did a real good job, I think, is, like, to show that Zack and Tyler did start to get, like, a brotherly bond and he started seeing him as his brother. I would agree with that. I mean, the character development, I guess, between those two did build and grow 
And I think it started growing when the blind guy came. And uh, the scene after that where Tyler just started crying, you know, for random reasons. Which, I guess it gets explained, but I don't know. One question I have about this movie, and maybe I missed it, is why were those two guys after Tyler? Like, maybe I just missed it? Is it, like, I, I just don't... Understand. Well, he's he's kept stealing crabs from them, and then he burned all their cages, their crab cages. So they were out like twenty one thousand dollars and not being able to make money the rest of the year. Okay, did I completely miss that in the movie? Yeah, it was like it was was the, very the first scene. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I just don't remember it. Yeah, so he owed them a lot of money, and they were pissed. So yeah. I do remember, like, remember that uh, beginning scene. Come on, you guys are at me for like not having watched <laughs> it in a while. I remember. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I do like like so the very beginning of the movie. I was like, man, I really, I really hope they kill off Tyler and not Zach, because <laughs> I really like Zach and I thought he was doing a great job. And in these type of movies, it's always like, oh, we're gonna kill off the the kid, the guy with Down syndrome because oh, reasons. Be and <laughs> yeah, and, and I was like, I hope they kill off Tyler instead. And then by the end, when I actually kind of liked Tyler, and when they show him get hit with that like crowbar in the head, I was like, "Wait, do, did they just kill Tyler off?" Yeah. Huh. They, well, they, that's what they, they certainly wanted tried. To yeah, they tried to make right. you believe that it was that. And I always hate that kind of stuff because it's so forced. You know, I think yeah. I complained about it during our discussion about Mega Mind, but um, <laughs> like having that fake out where you know Eleanor starts crying and Zach puts his hands in his, I'm sorry, his face in his hands. And it's like two seconds. It's not even like two seconds later. They're driving in the car and he wakes and Tyler up. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, so why do we need the fake out? <laughs> like, I understand yeah, it's an emotional with you, part. That whole, but... that whole ending brought this movie down like three tiers. <laughs> like, I was, I was so mad about this ending. Yeah. A lot of people, like from what I read, a lot of people kind of agreed where it was just like, I get they were trying to make this a feel-good movie kind of thing, and it's like, you can't end with one of them dying when it's about bonds and growing together. But it would have been better if they did. Mm -hmm. You guys maybe think it was like they just edited it in last minute, that like it was supposed to, he like Tyler was supposed to stay dead, maybe? Maybe, just, yeah. Like, it it yeah, could have been a to... test audience thing where they went, no, mm -hmm. he should live. And they went, all right. <laughs> sure. Well, we have this extra footage from them driving in the car, so... <laughs> I mean, maybe it would have ended with, like, you know, her showing him, like, the sign, oh, there's Florida, and then it would have just faded out right there and instead of, like, showing the backseat at the end. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I did think that, I mean, I guess we're, since we're talking about the, I mean, it's kind of a short movie, so it's not. <laughs> when he lifts up um, the big tall guy and oh, throws geez. him. Yeah. I mean, besides that being cheesy looking and stuff, I thought for sure he was actually going to throw it at the guy with the crowbar. Yeah, that's what that. I thought. I, I thought so too, and I thought yeah, here. that would have been a better ending. It would have yeah. been. Yeah. By like five points. <laughs> right? Especially like, yeah, if you have Zach's oh, notice, <laughs> oh, this guy's coming up on Tyler with the crowbar, and then he like picks the guy up and throws him at him. You'd be like, oh, sweet. But then they just did this thing where like the guy clearly on a wire just like, whoo! Yeah, <laughs> like completely sideways out of the frame. Yeah. Also and, glad we spent you know three minutes seeing Eleanor try to break out of handcuffs you know? for no yeah. reason. And then Once again, nothing at the end. Yeah, she didn't even do anything. She just kind of. I was like, you know, you have words, right? You can scream. Yeah. You can <laughs> do something. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Also, I'm. I mean, I think they should have set up that um, the guy who calls the two dudes who are angry at uh, Tyler. They should have set that up like very early in the beginning of the movie because yeah. you see that guy once and you're like, okay, he's one of the guys, and then yeah. all of a sudden you shoot to the end of the movie and he's there and he's like, oh, he, this, this dude's here. Like at yeah. the beginning, he should have been talking about, oh, I'm gonna go to this wrestling thing down near Florida, you know, or something like that. And then that would have made that would have been a payoff right there because there he is a you know you don't yeah. you don't remember it, but you re well you sort of remember him talking about it, but you didn't think you know you, obviously the connection. It, it could even there. have just been like a. As they're walking away, like you just hear it, but like you know, it's not a focus. Yeah. But I did. I will say, like when I saw him at the wrestling thing, I was like, "Wait, is that that guy from earlier, or is it just a, another like big black guy?" <laughs> yeah, a little background on that too would have been nice. And also, like, what did they just hit him with a crowbar and just leave? Like, what well, happened? Like, did I the think... wrestlers jump in? Did <laughs> no? I think I it's implied that they hit him a few times in the face and stuff. 
because his because he got hit like from the angle that they showed he would have gotten hit like in the back of the head but yeah. yet his eye and stuff and face was all bruised and stuff so but I think still they, it's like you, they think you would have or they you would think that they would have done more or like what happened like what did Zach do what, the wrestlers well, like yeah, I, I would think that those wrestlers would have jumped in and helped you know because yeah. I mean, they don't know the situation. They just see a guy coming with a crowbar, like, yeah, yeah. I figured or, like the crowd wrestlers... just cheering them on, thinking it was the next wrestling match. Like, man. yeah, I figured like they did jump in, but you know, uh, Duncan would have been able to like get a few hits in before you know anyone would be able to like help, jump in and actually help. Yeah, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. That whole ending I'm... just, <laughs> uh, I don't get it. Like, how, how do you guys? How do you guys feel about the uh, the love story it mixed in? Oh here? my god, yeah. it felt a little too forced and just. Yeah, an- another movie with another forced love plot, and I, I I found this one to be a little bit better than Enemy at the Gates, right? But yeah. still, it's like half. I mean, halfway through the movie, all of a sudden they just, you know, yeah. all of a sudden just, just like, have oh, googly hey, eyes for each other, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, it's like more love more. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go. I was just going to say, it would have been just a lot more sense if, like, they would have kept Tyler, you know, trying to flirt with her and, like, trying to get with her, and, like, she just kept refusing the entire time. It would have been a lot more believable that way. Yeah. yeah it, but... it, it... Go ahead. Gr- Greedy has a lot to say, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Greedy. But they, the two slow scenes was those two talking to each other. It's not like, you know, you just, you know, fall in love just from, like, two, like, two-second talks of, you know, just... Uh, Oh, how you treat him, and oh, it's just so dumb. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously there might have been more that I mean, there was like those, you know, uh, quick shots of you know them growing as characters, but they didn't really. I mean, it could have just been a friendly relationship. They didn't have to be in love, you know. I, I feel like, I feel like them just being friends would have been a better uh, side story for for the movie yeah. and keeping the focus on the main point which was zach yeah yeah like even if they had had it so like they just remained friends and by the end the ending you kind of see a hint that hey maybe at this point finally they're kind of like liking on each other like zootopia yeah i guess (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's been a while since i've seen zootopia um but yeah you know just kind of like hint they're good friends but hey maybe there's gonna be something more down the line that would have been better than just forcing it in like two scenes. Yeah. And yeah, I get, you know, the scene where they made out was only, he only did that. So Zach could be in the wrestling match, but still it's just like, I don't know. Wasn't Wait. needed. <laughs> Wait, he made out to, to get Zach into the wrestling match. Yeah. Because well, he, he handcuffed, handcuffed her. her to the car. Oh, well, I, I, I wouldn't say they made out. I mean, he just kind of kissed her once or twice. You know, I don't <laughs> Hey, uh, man, it was three times. That's that's like a small makeout session. All right. <laughs> Very small. Minimum minimum kisses for a small makeout session. All right. Well, uh, we skipped a whole bunch of movie in the middle. We just talked about like the true. beginning and the end. Well, yeah. obviously, well, the most heated things came from the ending on this one. Yeah, I was yeah. like, the middle was good. I enjoyed the middle. Like, I liked the like I said the relationship between the two, kind of just building. And by the end, you're like, yeah, these two are friends. They're good. You know, they created this wrestling persona for him on the beach of the river while getting drunk. Yeah, um, it, I think it is weird though that like he mentions it a few times, like that his ankle hurts. Then he gets drunk, so he's like, I don't feel pain. And in the morning, he's like, my ankle hurts again. But like, they never bring it up. Well, they yeah, never talked about true. the same thing with like the diabetes thing. Um, they, they they like she mentions that oh his his blood sugar could be low, but you never see him like eating anything Eat or, or yeah. injecting insulin. Didn't bring or, it up, or you know, yeah, it never really affects the movie. They just kind of say it to I don't know, maybe to tug at your heartstrings. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They mentioned like he missed his medication, and you're just like, but right. I mean, he's fine. Yeah. I mean, there, I mean, there was no have... indication that he was uh, going. And it could be a thing, it, and maybe that's the point was, like, hey, you guys go, oh, you, you worry too much, and you put put them on this medication they don't need because they have Down syndrome, and you just assume, oh, that 
they have to take this medication, but really they don't need it. I don't know if that was their the point they were trying to make. Yeah, or... but with diabetes, I mean, that's more of like a day to day thing. Like that's not just well, a pill. Sure. Yeah, I don't. Too. You could did have type say, 2 diabetes. Yeah. Did they say diabetes? I never heard yeah. them specifically say yeah. diabetes. Huh. Yeah, because especially yeah, if it's type 1, that, that would he'd be dead. Well, uh, why don't yeah. you... What's the difference between type 1 and type 2? So type 1 is... It, they call it child onset, but it can happen later than just being a child. Like, my wife has type 1. She was diagnosed at 19. It's just pretty much your pancreas. It's an autoimmune disease. Your pancreas just stops working and doesn't work can't produce insulin yeah. you can't produce insulin Guys are talking to a diabetic right here <laughs> yeah yeah well, i was more so talking to greedy but <laughs> oh okay oh, was it? My, sorry my wife's type one so it's like no yeah. it works it all works out <laughs> yeah all right and then type two is just usually diet related so well i learned something new yeah, a lot of people don't know the difference, and they just think it's the exact same disease. When really, they're they're not that similar. Mm-hmm. Like some of the symptoms are similar, but like the causes and everything are way different. And type two is more curable than yeah. type one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Anyways, <laughs> but the one scene I want are we all good with that scene? Are we good yeah. to move on? Sure. Yeah. I want to talk about the scene where they uh like broke into the lake and the girl was so afraid like she like she's like i can't do it i was like what can't you do like all you have to do is hold on to the rope and then let go it's like well, that's exactly know. what zach says <laughs> yeah <laughs> some people have a fear of that type of stuff i don't know oh, you know it's I just, just, it's just to make it eleanor look silly. cute you know she's yeah. she's afraid you know of the water oh how cute uh, she's in yeah. her underwear yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, and I thought it was weird that they just cut to the scene of them just like on this crane. What's like, yeah. wait, where are they? <laughs> like, and by the end, you see them get back on their raft. And you're like, oh, they just found this crane floating. But it's like, well, that's supposed to be you know them bonding now after you know the heated discussion. What's that? Yeah. You know, drowning in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, it's like, well, the barge just show them come up to those bar or like show that there's somebody else on that barge. Is like, hey, yeah, why don't you guys just swing on the crane or something? It just seemed we out of place. Or something. They're just, um, because on the well, time and we well, don't the, need it. Because that's wrong time, and we don't need it. The bar, bar <laughs> they use those barges and the cranes to um, dig the rivers deeper. You know, um, a lot mm-hmm. of times during heavy rain seasons, the mud will pile up and cause a problem for like boats going through so that's why they have that there to dig out the, the okay st- so they just sit there unattended floating i i mean yeah. I, I yeah i think so actually okay i, I, was, like, I used to I mean, live on a man-made lake and they would do it every year i don't remember yeah. specifically them having the crane just kind of sitting in the middle of it but i mean it could happen i mean it could be that way i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and who knows did they turn the crane you know did they operate the crane it's just like you know yeah i don't think they operated it. i think it was just kind of sitting there it it is kind of, it is kind of weird i feel that like a was... crane wouldn't just be hanging like that you know well but yeah how they the, get the rope obviously you know? there was something like, unsafe about it <laughs> <laughs> how do they get the rope they had to tie the rope to the crane because i don't think a rope would be tied to a chain hook you know my guess crane. is that like <laughs> if that crane sits there year round unintended that you know, locals tied the rope on there forever ago, and it should—they just everyone uses it as a swing to jump in the river. Yeah, okay, yeah. Again, I'm guess, I don't know. Yeah, like, fair enough. No, no, I agree. Okay. That, yeah, I was like, I mean, point. the sense. rivers out west are so small compared to the rivers out east. I've never like I, just some of these shots. I'm just like, God damn, I keep forgetting how big the rivers are out there. Like you can't, <laughs> you can barely see across it. While here, it's like you stand on one shore, you can see the other side. <laughs> So there's a lot of things about this, like just culture wise, that, you know, that I'm just like, I have no idea <laughs> about river life <laughs> when the rivers are that big. Speaking of the river, um, what'd you guys think of the, uh, the boat crossing scene yeah. where uh, yeah. Zach's tied behind Shia LaBeouf because he can't swim? I liked it, but at the same time, like it looked but like from several different... Down. Yeah, I was like, from diff- several shots, it looked like, oh, he's going to get hit, he's going to get hit, and then suddenly he doesn't get hit, and you're like, wait. Well, yeah, when when they go from the wide, like, the top-down shot to, like, the regular shot, yeah, he's, he moves so fast in that time period, because I remember there's the last, 
top down shot they do, he's definitely in front of that boat, and that boat is definitely about to hit him. And then yeah. they switch to the other shot, and he's like a few feet away from it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. thought like something was about to happen, like some kind of disaster. Shot continuity is pretty important in movies, and and like these short indie ones, I don't know if it's like that. I mean, it's obviously a little bit more difficult to keep things going through the day, and you're you're losing light a lot faster than maybe you're being on a set. But still, it's like you know, you you don't have to make it like that close of a call. You know, like I don't think anyone yeah. thought he, that Zach was gonna die right there. You know, <laughs> so early in the movie. I also feel like it also looked like the attachments on the sides of the boat were much larger than well, I when think they were in the water. Zach was actually near the boat. Yeah. If that makes sense. Well, I thought that those nets but were they, like they, in the water because they were like, you know. I think they were. Yeah, I thought they were going to scoop him up. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I didn't think the boat was going to hit him, but I thought he was going to get like scooped up in their shrimp net. Yeah. And then Shy was going to be dragged along with him, and that would have been. Mm-hmm. An interesting uh, adventure. Would have, but they didn't have the budget for that. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> they wrote like, in the everything... script and, yeah. Yeah, I was say, like, from everything I read, like, pretty much they only filmed in places where they could film for free. Hmm. Yeah. And the uh, uh, yard sale. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it's like, their budget literally was probably their two, their, the few big name actors. Yeah, hence, mm. hence the, you know, broken and de- you know decaying houses and yep. abandoned trailers and <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than uh doing rock uh reading like a teleprompt or was it doing what what movie looked like he was I, we haven't talked about it but what, there was like a movie i watched and it looked like he was just reading the script maybe it wasn't doing but no, i don't know i'll have to get back to you on that yeah. okay <laughs> What do you guys think of um, Tyler and Zach's like relationship throughout the movie? Like the way that Tyler treated Zach, like you know, at first being very bossy, like you know, you follow my rules and you're gonna do what I say, and eventually turning into more of a, like a like a you know closer friendship where like they joke around and like just talk about whatever, and the way he, like he he went, I guess like, like above yeah. and beyond to treat him, try to treat him and make him like feel normal instead of yeah yeah, yeah. instead of like. How like, everyone else makes him feel, you know, like he's not normal. Yeah, once I again, like I, it, it definitely, yeah, it did, like, I, going back to the first point I had about, you know, Shia's character kind of switching back and forth a lot, it did it did go pretty quickly there, and I don't and know, I maybe, like, maybe after he learned that Zach was running away from, you know, like, uh, that retirement home, you know, he was on the run, maybe that's when he started to trust him a little bit more, but... Oh, yeah, that's true. I, I, I Now that we're both... Scene, I can recall is uh, the scene where Zach is like, I want you to have my wish for my birthday or something. And then Tyler's like crying. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the scene that, you know, did a 360. Yeah. For sure. Like I said, that's when he kind of had that flashback to his brother and then realized, like, this is like my new brother. Yeah. And I do like at the end, like when the hospital, you do see Tyler make a wish on a like a birthday cake. Because yeah. yeah. you know his wish is that Tyler will live, and then he lives. So you're like, all right. <laughs> it's yeah, still, I guess it's it does make a lot more sense forced, when... But... Yeah. I didn't think about it at the time because I was still, you know, dumbfounded <laughs> by that wrestling scene. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that you bring it up. <laughs> but, yeah, I really like that, that scene when he first meets uh eleanor in like that shop and he he goes back to sagging he's like oh so i guess we're both outlaws and yeah i guess yeah. from that point on he got he had like a i guess a little bit more respect towards him yeah yeah that's another thing that changed real quick is eleanor is you know oh i gotta do this i gotta do that you gotta this is how you treat him too oh yeah he he's happy here you know <laughs> well she did like i mean Again, this was part, partially because I don't. Again, she's not a great actress, but <laughs> I'm guessing. Um, but part of it, I think, was yeah, she started to realize like, oh crap, I am just treating him like he needs help for everything, when he clearly he's made it this far on his own. But I'm I surprised know, I didn't hear the lines of he doesn't have a disability; he has an ability. Like I felt 
I, I was waiting for that line. <laughs> I think that line or that saying came about after this movie? I don't know, maybe not. No, oh, that's around for a while now. Yeah. All right. Um, real quick, we don't have to talk much about it, but what do you guys think about the scenes with the, the blind guy? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that, that guy... Uh... He's like my worst nightmare, you know, not, not not in the way of like him being scary or anything like that, but just a person who's like trying to like force you to talk about religion. Like, ugh, yeah, that's like, like I'm in from talk about Jesus. I'm glad they didn't expand on that. Yeah, that, that like, just no, sends my a, my anxiety to an all time high because I've been <laughs> through situations like that where it's like, you know, you're working at a church and you're like, just mind your own business doing your job. And all of a sudden the pastor comes up. And he's like, hey, do, you, do you believe in God? And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> and like, right. it's just, the, it's like the most awkward conversation I have because it's like, I don't mind that you have, uh, you know, this belief, you know, I don't mind. But I'm not coming in here and going, mm, well, do you believe in, you know, the power of Satan? Like, I'm not, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you should have. Yeah, well. <laughs> Yeah, I'll say I've had similar experiences with some uh, ministers for weddings who were like super, you know, religious, and they just start talking to you. It's like I'm just here to film the wedding. I don't need to. I don't need to get into a discussion about. Yeah, I'll, I'll save it for the theology podcast. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't get why they couldn't just take the boat. Like I don't know. If that's supposed to be like a like a learning experience from the old guy. I think it was. It's just, it's just, but they didn't present it like that it was just like oh you're baptized here you go yeah it seems like <laughs> he, he pretty much forced one of them to be baptized at least and you yeah. i see that oh. as like a major red flag like you know if someone's if someone has a disability like zach does and maybe he doesn't fully understand what's going on that's that's morally wrong in my opinion to just out of the blue be like come on just do, just do it yeah i would agree, I agree. with that yeah the way they led up to it, he was talking, and I'm glad they didn't have separate scenes, like, you know, like how most new movies would do, you know, show them get baptized, and then, you know, show them gathering the supplies and all that. You know, just runtime. They cut down on the runtime there, which is good. I appreciated that. But it just seemed like, oh, he's going to give them food, and he's going to give them a shower. Nope. Baptized. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. And, like I said, the boat thing, I think it... <sighs> He was he was kind of hard to understand. He had a very thick accent. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought he said something about like a like he a parable from the Bible or something. That's why you can't have the boat. But again, I'm not 100 percent sure because I was having trouble understanding him. Yeah, maybe I don't know. It's also no. He said he said like he can have the boat, didn't he? No, they had to build no, he their own boat. He, you can use boat. all the scrap yeah. in the yard except for the boat. That's what he told them. Oh, Although yeah, I, I guess you wouldn't want the boat after he shot it. But... Well, he only shot the side, though. I mean, I... <laughs> yeah. just put some flex tape over that. <laughs> I mean, if they had had that boat, it couldn't have been burned down. That's true. Yeah, there you go. That's why it was probably because they had to burn down the boat. <laughs> yeah. Because he had to force that, you know, guys into his life. <laughs> yeah, I just I found that whole section to be just like unneeded for the most part like they, they could have just you know maybe maybe they do find the boat but it's rusted on the bottom and then they have to build the boat you know an actual boat i, I felt like that would have been a better just, scene and just yeah, kind of just, eliminate the um you know it's it's kind of a movie trope to have like the wise black man come in you know it, it, it's it, yeah. it, it could have done without that it's, it's a bit of I mean, too even, much of a trope. even if they didn't like find a boat just to have them find the supplies and like hey we're gonna build a boat yeah and or just have, you know, because I guess they kind of needed a guy there to be like, oh, yeah, I can kind of tell you which way they went. Um, you know, which the blind guy did. No, he, he, it, he didn't say anything to her from what I remember. Well, he said, come and talk about Jesus. And then right. I assume he told her because then, you know, like right after that, she found them. Like he probably said they're going down the river. So she just started following the river, hmm. being close to the river is my guess. But either way, it just could have just been a guy who was like, "Hey, here, oh, you need you need supplies to build a boat. Here, I have some junk. Make it out of it." <laughs> yeah. Like, and yeah, sure, have him be blind, but you don't need to, all the weird. I don't know. I guess the south. They were trying. I guess maybe they were just trying to show that like this, there's a lot of people in the south like this who just force their religion on you. Yeah, that's pretty much the south in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but it would have been a little better like message if like. Zach was like actually building the boat, but every scene, if I'm remembering correctly, was 
Tyler building the boat. No, no I, I, the I remember them both. And, they were both. Yeah, Zach was helping. It. Yeah. Yeah, I he, saw Zach uh, sawing one of the wood boards. Ah, okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a family a, a, a brotherly project. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, from my Bond perspective though, going back to Eleanor kind of just finding them, I, I, it seemed to me like she just kind of happened upon them. I, I, yeah. I from from what I from my perspective, it's just like she was just kind of like following down that road without much knowledge of where he went. She was just kind of doing a shot in the dark. It seemed like. And, and all, all of a sudden, she came across them. Yeah, I, it was just. But know, my guess is that he did. What happens? <laughs> yeah, so my guess is that the the blind uh, preacher did tell her something, and so she was following the river, knowing they were on the river. But maybe not. Yeah, so I'm, they, just call I'm assuming that you know the blind guy said, "Hey, they built a raft and went down the river." Well, I mean, up to that point, even then, like no one had said that they had seen either of you know either oh, of Zach's yeah. character, Let's right? So she's just on a whim going down this 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 road. Well, she knows he's he- where he's headed. He's headed towards the wrestling school, so she's heading in that direction. Yeah, I guess so. Still, I mean, <laughs> she, she's she's making very slow progress compared to Tyler. Yeah, and she's, Zach, in, a, you she's know? in a car and they're on a boat. Right. Yeah. It just it's like okay. Um, and they had to build a boat. <laughs> yeah, they had I to. Think it was, it would have been better if, like, they just when they got down to Aiden or whatever the city was called, she was just there waiting for him. Yeah, right. Because she knew where they were going, she would have just gone straight there. Uh, well, I mean, I guess but at then that point, you wouldn't she... have the bonding, and then you wouldn't yeah. have, you know. Well, it also, uh, I guess, at that point, change. She, <laughs> she didn't. She probably didn't think he was capable of making it that far on his own. Yeah, and that's probably why when she approached them and. Uh, Zach was hung over or you know, sleeping, whatever you want to call it, and she was freaking out. Yeah. But she probably thought he was dead. <laughs> um I would say that uh the one scene that I wish would have been different is when the two guys uh burned the boat and they were about to shoot Tyler, and if Zach would have shot one of the guys. Yeah. Because, you know, they led up to that. You know, they showed him shooting. You know, they showed him how he was able to handle a gun. Yeah. And I just wanted to see it. You know, <laughs> is well, that bad yeah, for me to say? <laughs> no, because it, it's Chekhov's gun there. You know, they showed yeah. him learning, but then never gave us the payoff of him firing it. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be the payoff scene. Yeah. Even if it hadn't killed one, you know, just wounded him, they had to go take care of him. And, that, and then that would also that would help the ending. Pain. Yeah, yeah, that would help the ending. More yeah. anger of why he shows up and is like, now I've really got to kill these guys because they shot my dude. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. Tay and I are going to make a rebirth of this now. He's going to Falcon the rebirth. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is one scene um, where Tyler and Eleanor are kind of talking on the raft for the first time, and he's trying to explain to her why... Zaxon should be treated super different, or he should be treated like the retirement home people. And Eleanor goes into this like this rant where she's talking about how, oh, you don't you don't know what I've been through. I have to, I have to watch people die, and I'm the only person there for them. That felt very out of place. It didn't seem to really go with the conversation. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I agree with you. I guess she she was just trying to portray that um she has like um as it harder than. Everyone yeah, wants I, to, guess, I guess that she has been through a lot herself, I guess. Yeah. Which, I mean, on one hand, yeah, sure. It's like, okay, but I'm not talking about you. It's like you work at, a, you know, pretty much a hospice, like not a hospice, but, you know, a retirement home, nursing home. And it's like, yeah, you're going to get that with nursing homes. Why are you treating this this 22 year old in quotes? Because he's definitely not 22. Like a, you know, geriatric deathbed patient. Yeah. Well, I think it's also like, I'm not losing another, you know, kind of yeah, type of maybe. deal. Maybe. Yeah, I, just, I felt uh, like it was a little out of place. I mean, because what, what Tyler was saying was not even close to where she started her, her conversation, <laughs> you know, her, her little yeah, monologue. Her rant. Yeah. That's true, yeah. So That catching the too was kind of cool. I mean, I know he really didn't. It was cool. I know he really didn't, but it was just kind of like, eh, unexpected. It was a good way to break up that conversation. Or, yeah. 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 
Well, and I think it helped Eleanor realize, oh, he can do stuff on yeah. his own. Ah, peanut butter on fish. He can cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. All right. Cool. But yep. I mean, I, I I like that whole the whole montage where he was kind of training with Tyler, and then also at the end when the um, saltwater redneck had his change of heart. I I thought that was also yeah. a, a a nice thing. But towards the end, he seemed to be like projecting onto Zach a little bit, you know, with with uh, with the whole thing, and he was kind of yeah. I, I don't know I I don't I don't understand why the guy who was fighting Zach was so bent out of shape about. You know him being in the ring and stuff like that. I just—it's like, look, man, you—you you were with them the entire time they were training. Do you yeah. not have any? Do you not have a conscience? Yeah. Like, what's going on yeah. here? Why are you beating the crap sense. out of him? Yeah. It would have—it would have been better if, like, for some reason, Samson suddenly couldn't go in the ring, and it was somebody else who didn't know him. That right. would have made more sense. Yeah. But yeah, Sam, yeah. It, just, it was out of like from everything we'd seen of him in the like the, you know the two scenes he was in. And then he also started calling him the R word and just being verbally abusive as well. It's like, yeah, it's, it's so, so weird. And it I was... think they wanted you to see that change in him when they're all in the car randomly screaming for whatever reason because of the music. Uh, I think because he was just so like blank face, right? I mean, he seemed a little bit amused by everybody, but he didn't seem like he was, you know, he didn't join in, but he seemed yeah. like ah, they're having fun. This is fine. I don't know. It, it, like, it, I think it just seemed a little weird to have him suddenly switch up and be like, "All right, now I'm going to beat you up and kill yeah. you." All right, I'm I'm taking this kid to the hospital. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, he's like, "Oh, this isn't a make a wish," and it's like, "Dude, wrong organization first, uh, <laughs> first for <laughs> like." I mean, make a wish could make it so a, a dying kid could. I don't know. <laughs> But, yeah, but he's yeah. not dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It well, was... I mean, he was dying. I mean, kind of dying right there where he was getting punched around. But yeah, um, I guess. Yeah, I just, you know, there's so many weird writing things in here because for the most part yeah. it's written fine. But there's these scenes where it's like, you know, like we were talking about before with Shia and and Dakota Fanning on the raft, and then it's this not Dakota also. Fanning. It's Dakota Johnson. <laughs> Dakota fuckface. Um. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It also seemed like Zach didn't take any of the advice the guy taught him either. And, you know, maybe it was, you know, adrenaline, nerves, you know, that kind of stuff. He didn't feel out the ring. He, you know, he didn't do this. He didn't he do didn't that. He didn't fill out the ring um, when he was in his costume. <laughs> he went, he went uh, from, like, know. rope to rope. Yeah, there wasn't enough yeah, focus on it, though. I mean, yeah. that I just seemed like know. he was, like, doing, like, his showtime thing, you know? like Yeah. I, I I didn't I didn't see it as him feeling out the ring. I just saw it as him kind of messing around with this Falcon, you know, yeah. suit on. And yeah, I think it would have been good to like emphasize that like, you know, he 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 just show the moves. You know, maybe he fails at doing the moves in you know with with this dude because he's so much bigger. But I mean, at least show him trying to do like the different moves that they taught him. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense that they would just kind of throw him in there and then, you know not use any of the stuff that he had been training for the entire movie. He didn't, they didn't even train to do this, the freaking move that he does in the end. Wouldn't yeah. it have been so much better if like, maybe, you know, sometime during the montage, like Tyler takes Zach off to the side. He's like, Hey, let's try and do this nuclear throw or whatever it's called, you know, but they never do that. He just does it randomly without any practice. And well, that, he's watched it enough times. Well, in the you, video. You, you can watch 5,000 yeah, videos about, making cakes you, you actually have to be you know you actually have to do it yourself in order to learn yeah and yeah. well and they i mean they did say like because he asked him about it and he's like oh that was fake you know you can't really do that right and he just so, kind of does it and he just and then he's just like i'll show you i don't know it's just it's one of those things it's like all right you could have yeah, you could have yeah, had weird. some sort of payoff here like you know tyler and him try to do it early on and they and they fail because of one reason or another or you know Maybe when he asks him the, sh you know, I don't know. It's just one of those things that just kind of bugged me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get that. Understandable. There, like I said, there were a lot of things in this movie. Like there were some really good things, but yeah, there was just some weird, odd choices and stuff that didn't pay off. And you're just like, okay. 
All right. I, mean, I, I think that's enough. Of... Yeah, I think I'm good. I think yeah. I have nothing else. I've said my okay. piece. Callus, anything else uh, you want to add? Um, I'm good. All right. Well, Tay, hey. why don't you start us off with our final thoughts and rating? Okay. Well, I mean, like I said, I feel like there was a lot of really good moments in this movie. Um, you know, the acting, for the most part, you know, was a little community theater, like extras everywhere and type thing. But I think Zach did a good job. Even Shia did a pretty good, you know, a good job. Um, towards the end, the beginning was a little iffy. Um, and then Dakota did okay. You know, she did her best. <laughs> um directing you know it was it was a fun movie directed pretty good um besides some odd choices again and just writing some odd choices um but overall you know i had fun it was a fun movie um i'll give it a 3.5 out of 5 all right um yeah i think the acting from everyone except for like Shia LaBeouf and Zach really brought this movie down in my opinion i mean the whole time Eleanor was on screen, all I could think about was those scenes in Fifty Shades of Grey where she's naked and tied up. I I know that kind of sounds a little dirty-minded of me, but, you know, it's the last thing I saw her in. Um, but anyway, bes- <laughs> that's besides the point. I just, I, I felt like the movie um, should have been like a short film. You know, I feel like this would have worked much better if they cut out some of the middle bits, you know, cut out some of those more awkward exchanges and kind of shortened it to like be a short film i feel like this would have worked a lot better um and i think the the movies you know it, it's got a good message hidden in there somewhere you know it's not i guess it's not hidden but it's you know it's in there also morphed around a bunch of other things going on and i just feel like this is another movie where it's like okay the love plot is just kind of like thrown in there and it, it's just kind of awkward um how fast things kind of progress. Uh, the character motivations kind of switch back and forth a lot. There's a lot of things that just seemed a bit out of place in here. And um, all in all, it's not like a, it's not a terrible movie. It's not a bad, it's not a bad one, but I think this one's kind of like right down the middle. Um, so I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five. Two and five. Okay. Uh, I, agree mostly what yemi said and i can't believe no one talked about the ending yet but that ending wrestling match just just made me lose all interest in this movie and i get it you you wanted to show that you know the kid is strong you know what he's been dealing with and what he's been going through with his life but him throwing the guy was just so much and i feel like there's a lot they could have changed you know like maybe zach throws the guy at you know tyler's enemies and he saves them or you know there's just a lot of unexplained things and i felt it was like a lot of directors like this is what we're how it's gonna go because i say so with no explanation uh the acting i agree with the i mean it was bad uh i even think think it's shiloh labeouf's best work um it just it didn't mind i don't know it was just this movie just kind of just maybe kind of brain dead and that being said i'm gonna give it a one out of five whoa wow and that ending really screwed it up for you yeah (laughs) i literally screamed what the f am i watching (laughs) as that scene went on (laughs) anyways cows go ahead wow that's that's a bombshell right there (laughs) all right well i agree with like what uh all of you were saying in, in regards to like the acting um you know Sex and Shia's uh, on screen chemistry worked out pretty well for the most part. And it was like kind of like I said before, Dakota's acting just a bit dry here and there. And like it was definitely, uh, I don't know if that was the best casting choice, you know, for, for that role. But uh, overall, the movie was like uh, pretty enjoyable. And I really enjoyed, you know, Sack as a person that has down syndrome and like what it meant to the movie and for you know the message that it was portraying you know i did really enjoy that part and uh it kind of made me respect shia labeouf a little bit more as an actor for you know uh, doing a movie like this because you know my opinion of him is was uh pretty low but um yeah overall it was uh, a pretty enjoyable movie for the for the most part so i would give it a, a three out of five 
All right, we're, we're all kind of spread across the board on this one, huh? Again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our fine lowest rating. Oh, yet. but <laughs> wait a second. Uh, I guess that my rating doesn't count since my opinion doesn't matter on for this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, that's true. I was kidding, <laughs> Callus. <laughs> <laughs> but you should seriously watch the movies, though. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> From now on. We'll do. <laughs> Speaking of movies, though. Callus has a recommendation for us. What do you got? Yes, I do. So this is a movie that I've been trying to get all you guys to watch for the longest time. And it is from a genre that is largely unrepresented in Film Freaks, which I'm very disappointed by. So I'm going to rectify things and recommend the movie, which is Legend of the Drunken Master, starring Jackie Chan. Not to be confused with Drunken Master from, like, 78. This one's from 1994. Stars Jackie Chan. And, uh... Quick plot is... A young martial artist is caught between respecting his pacifist father's wishes or stopping a group of disrespectful foreigners from stealing precious artifacts. They should have just said gangsters. (laughs) Ah, the movie plot synopsis things are always weirdly written. Yeah. I've seen clips of this one, but I've never seen it fully, so that'll be it'll be fun a fun watch. Yeah, you guys have only done like one other martial arts movie before, so Which one was that? Jack- Old Boy. Oh yeah. Old well, Boy, yeah, 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 yeah. Jackie Chan is always fun. Yeah, Jackie Chan is always, always fun. Very watch. fun. Greatest actor ever. Now Callus, would you say that this movie is anything like um Oh, what's it called? Kung Fu Hustle? Sure. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Not really. <laughs> okay, not like Kung Fu. It's, it's right. a lot more serious in tone. <laughs> okay, I'm going to switch. I'm going to change my expectations a little bit then. Because <laughs> from the still... from the title, it, it sounds like it's a goofy kind of movie, like Kung Fu Hustle is. Yeah, to be fair, it is like a lot goofier in, in parts, but it definitely tries to be, you know, the story is a lot more serious than, you know, what Kung Fu Hustle is doing, which is like more of a parody. Ah, okay. All right, all right. Well, yeah, I'm I'm excited, you know. Um, I haven't done yeah, my Jackie it. Chan binge that Callus has been asking me to do for a while, but which she will do after this movie. All right, I'll I'm do sure. I'll yep. do this, then I'll watch Rush Hour, and um, I'll go from there. <laughs> Callus, you actually gonna rewatch the movie? I'll get you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need to. I well, saw it like three years. Guys, Callus <laughs> found his thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, we all have a thing now. There we go. Nope. Oh man. <laughs> Wait, what's your thing, thing? Yeah, I bring up Brightburn every episode. Oh well. I'm well, checking that off the list here. right now. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Right. What can you say <laughs> yeah. about how can you compare this to Brightburn? <laughs> I can say that I liked Peanut Butter Falcon better than Brightburn, but I rated them the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you don't want to be um, spoiled or if you want to join the conversation for The Legend of the Drunken Master from 1994, make sure you watch it before the next episode uploads in about two weeks. If you want to find the movie, it's on Amazon, um, so that's pretty pretty simple. Just rent it from Amazon. Uh, and, of course, we always are uh, looking for your film recommendations. Just message us or do whatever I said at the beginning of the podcast episode. You know the drill by now. And like I said, we'll be announcing what we're doing for episode number 50 af- uh, at, at the end of Callus's episode. So that should be pretty, pretty surprise. Maybe, maybe not surprising, but it should be pretty hype for the audience. Uh, so make sure you uh, listen to the end on that one, as you should, for every single one, right? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, you guys have anything that you want to mention before we end the show? Uh, nope. No. Go Browns? Yeah, go Browns. Yes, go Browns. Yeah. All right. Well, I am Yummy the Ferret, and I've been here with... Brady Waffles. Jay Mation. And Kalas. And we are Film Freaks with a Z. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Later.